Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. In a world where rugged and reliable matters, Ruger stands strong. Celebrating 75 years of American-made craftsmanship, Ruger continues to set the standard for excellence in firearms. From the iconic 1022 to the American rifle and beyond, each firearm embodies precision engineering and our deep-rooted traditions. Join us in honoring a legacy built on strength, innovation, and the American spirit. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Titus, and we're here with Sean Peterson from Peterson Mule Company. And my good girlfriend, Miss Maria Davidson from, well, she's with SCI Foundation. She is a carnivore, uh, what is it, a large carnivore biologist, manager, extraordinaire for SCI. But more importantly, she's here just as my friend. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm sorry about you for your luck in that. But, uh, it's all right. Maria and I met, and we had, like, this instant, like, did we just become best friends? You have mules. I have mules. <laughs> and then I met Sean through Maria at Chrome this year, Chrome in the Canyon Mule Sale. And now Sean, he's forced uh, to have me I'm put upon him, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's what's, that's what's it's, happened. It's been fun. <laughs> yeah, you poor thing. <laughs> like, I feel sorry for you. But we don't, actually, because your wife ditched you with two women for two days yeah. to ride mules. Most guys wouldn't complain about I that. I said she either really, either really, really likes me and wants me to be happy, <laughs> or she wants to get rid of me. <laughs> it's 50-50. We're not sure at this point <laughs> which is which. <laughs> but, you're, yeah, your wife is pretty fun. She's a She was a government packer for, what, 12 years? Yeah. Yeah. She's a badass so. lady packer. Yes. I think that's on her business card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> B-A-L-P is Perfect. the acronym for that. And so she, you know, she packed in for 12 years. Everything fire crews needed, what they needed for building trails. I mean, just anything that's odd and weird, that woman can put it in a mani and load it on a mule. And the longest tra- train she, or string she, she led, she said, was 22 mules long. And I, I just, I had anxiety thinking about I think there that. was three people involved in that, though. Yeah, that's from the way she lot. talks, but then she packed fish for the fishing game and yeah. stuff like that with the bubblers, and she says yeah. that was a heck of an experience. But you guys, you know, you guys professionally raise, train, and sell mules, and mules are such an important part of what I do. And you know, I've had mules literally since I was two years old, and they're they're an everyday part of my life. How did you get involved in mules? My dad was a government trapper for 38 years, so when I was a little kid, I followed him all over. On him, he had horses, so I just followed him all over wherever he went. And you know, in the summers, we stayed up at the cabin. We lived, basically lived out of the cabin up in Deer Creek, and mule or horses were a vital part of that operation. To where we was checking traps constantly, and calling coyotes, and you know, then any any predation that is jeopardizing the livestock. So he was doing that. I got riding horses at an early age. I grew up on a horse. And then when I got a little bit older, Sean Smith is a good friend of mine. And he kind of got me in to start my own horses. And then people just wanted to buy my horses when I was done with them. They kept mm-hmm. saying, you know, I'd ride a, mule, a horse down the road and they'd be, it's hard for me to say horse and not mule anymore. Because yeah, because all you mules. do is mules. But anyway, I'd be riding down the road and somebody, like ranchers would be like, What's, what do you want for that one? And I'd just. And I'd say, well, the first one I says is not for sale. Yeah. And then he says, I'll give you twelve hundred bucks. Well, I bought it for four, and I had about thirty days on it. And I'm, I'm like, sold. As a matter yeah. of fact, yeah. there's where, a where price for everything. <laughs> yeah, I just follow me to my property. So anyway, then I just started training mules. Then I start or horses. Then I started training for other people. Then a guy had a mule. He says, Did you ever try a mule? And I says, Never broke a mule. And he says, Well, I got one that keeps bucking me off. And he says, Would you be interested in him? And I says, Well. That I don't sounds know. like fun. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> ended up 
ended up buying the mule for 600 bucks and I ended up just falling in love with that mule. And then I always wanted to raise one. So I started raising one or I started, it got me a mare and I started raising some. And I really looked up to the people that, that did, you know, tra- road mules all the time yeah. and that kind of stuff. Cause I was, grew up in the back country anyway. So I raised one and then, you know, I got ended up, um, divorced, ended up, later on in life i ended up have when about the time i raised this first mule no second mule first one i sold a guy wanted it and then the second one was lily and through hard times and everything i had to sell that mule and so anyways i was training some horses at the time i was starting a few for um transtrums and they asked me they says what are you going to do with that mule and i says because i was riding it one day he says that mule's amazing and i says i don't I don't know. I said, I got a seller, you know. So she says, or they says, well, you ought to take it to Jake Clark's. And I said, what's Jake Clark's? And they <laughs> says, they, they give me his number. They says, call him. And I called him, and he says, send me a video, that kind of stuff. So I got one of my mule, did a video, sent it to him. He's like, you're in. So I went there. What year was that? That was actually in 2009 or 2010. Oh, wow. I can't remember when it was. Yeah. It was, two, I, okay, I got divorced in 2010, so that had to be 2011, I believe. Anyway, went there, and, man, I was just so impressed with the Cowboys. Yeah. The mules there, they were roping off of them. They were cutting cows on them. I mean, they, and they were just so nice. And then Mark Shrimp was there, and he had the pen next to me. And Mark Shrimp kind of, I mean, he, he's a gruff old guy, and I love him to death. I mean, I look up to that man. And he just kind of took me under his wing. He could tell that I was lost there. I didn't know what I was doing. And he's like, listen here, pard, you know, and just kind of told me about it. Well, I looked up to him. He high sold. And I just looked up to him, and I'd call him, and he'd just call me and talk to me, and I'd talk to him about, and I'd ask him advice. And he just kind of helped me along with a lot of what I did. So I owe a lot to Mark. And so then, so I was like number five high seller that year, I believe, out of like, there was like 100 mules there back then and i was pretty proud of that so then i was like man i don't know if if i'm gonna i want to go back to the sale but i don't want to do it until i think i have a chance of competing with them guys so anyway i bought june bug from a government trapper down in his name is jim bueller my dad got him his job years ago and he ended up transferring down to uh like he was 18 years old matter of fact he retired this year i think with Oh my heck! Fifty years of service. Wow. And anyway, I'm I'm rambling, but anyway, I'm getting off subject. But anyway, Jim's had this meal, and he says, you know, she's fine bone. She doesn't work for what I want down here. You know, she just I don't know that she's gonna hold up for what I do in these rugged Nevada mountains. So I says, well, he says, here's what I want. And he says, I want two thousand bucks for that meal. And he says, your dad tells me you're a heck of a hand. And he says, I would like to, you know. I'll, you you pay me when you sell him and he says when you sell him or sell her i won't get i won't take a dime over two grand yeah and he and i was like man i was you know th- little things like that can change your life because i didn't have the money to buy a decent the meal mule. at the time and I, and I was struggling so anyway i took june bug and i really started working with her hard and putting my heart and soul into it and i went back in 2013 and i topped the sale yeah that's awesome so through that, people just started, you know, like the American Mule Trainer Challenge that Joe Bison, that Laura Styron was putting on a deal. And they had Ty Evans, they had Paul Garrison, Chris French, and Button Criswell. Well, Button Criswell ends up getting hurt. And through me making my videos for the Jake Clark Mule Days and stuff, that's the only sale I was going to. And when, through me making those, he saw those videos. Well, Susie Weezer, she was the one that bought the first mule that I sold there. And she says, call this guy. So anyway, he calls me out of the blue and want me to be in it, man. And I don't, I'm not a traveler, like we've talked. No, yeah, you don't. We're literally <laughs> in his hometown in Montpelier, Idaho. There's nothing here. And he's been to Montana twice. That's his claim to traveling. So, yep. yeah, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. That's it. That about Vegas. Was, You've been to Vegas. That's when I was 46. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's very limited amount yep. of traveling. Yeah. So anyway, she bought it. Anyway, he asked me to be in that in that challenge and I went down there and you know got to know Ty a little bit more met Chris French met Paul Garrison and um me Ty Paul Chris yep 
that was it. Anyway, met those guys and met so many new people and everything. And then my people started watching my videos, and it's on. It's just a YouTube channel of Peterson Mule Company YouTube channel, and it has an E on the Peterson. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to go watch those videos, well, anyway, they liked what I did and all these things. So they started inviting me to training competitions and stuff like that. I went to Arizona Mule Days and did clinic there. I, you know, I just I'm not a clinician. I've thought about it, and well, you I've did done a, a pretty mini. dang good job with me and Maria. <laughs> Look how well we turned out. I mean, yeah. we are we are exemplary <laughs> students here. Right. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, anyway, so that just kind of presented more opportunities, you know. Then I the Arizona Mule Days. I know Meekums called me when they very first started doing that uh, Bryce Canyon. They wanted me to a clinic, and I'm like, man, I just don't do that. I'm mm. sorry. And I was working a full-time job at the time. So anyway, through all this, then I ended up in the Missouri Mule Makeover. I ended up judging the horse versus mule, stuff like that. But I really felt kind of, I don't know, I guess I should say blessed. Mm -hmm. You say that I didn't find mules, mules found me. Mm -hmm. And so through all this stuff and and the mules and what and my passion for it, it's kind of like, I got recognized for it on a level that I didn't think I'd be recognized for it. And like I say, I'm just a kid from Montpelier that just tries his best. Yeah. So, so the meal thing kind of found me in that aspect. And I went, I went back to Jake's and then I started going to Chrome in the Canyon. And then I, through me and Nellie, you know, I ended up going to Salmon. Of course I'd sold there once before, but it was just it was a horse through my Jake Clark well, mm -hmm. after I did the Jake Clark thing and I, I wanted to train a horse sold the horse there then I've I got the horse for you <laughs> you want to train a horse as you can see I got plenty here and they're not getting rolled <laughs> just to be clear here I've been trying to squeeze Sean all week and he does not take outside horses I've tried so <laughs> if you want a Peterson Mule Company mule you have to go either directly to Sean or to one of these sales and buy one but you know Maria you had your heart set on one of his mules this year I did and Sean broke my heart this year yeah, yeah. he really did I didn't break it. Well, you the sale did. did. The sale <laughs> did. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Maria was in love with one of Sean's mules. But you know what I love about it is Maria didn't didn't win the bid on that mule. That mule sold for a lot of money. Um, not not, and it was worth. It was a great mule. But you were such a gentleman. You came over right after the sale, shook Maria's hand, thanked her for bidding, yeah. and you felt bad because you knew she really wanted that mule and would have given it. A tremendous home and that's I think as a trainer or someone that works with these animals you know part of you in some ways you know you kind of you want to see you want to get the most out of them and you want the most for yeah. them and that's that's I do it for the mule and yeah. honestly why I work so hard is not not for the money it's so it's the sale works out afterwards mm -hmm. and one of the things that Maria did and this has ended up with being a good friendship is she came here before yeah she rode the mule here decided and you know she checked out some other mules she rode this mule and she really liked duke she was kind of set on duke and from the get-go yeah from the get-go and what, yeah. what else is cool is the lady that got her came here and rode him mm. or got him came here and rode him as well and she I ended hate up her by him. the way no you don't you're just jealous <laughs> oh 100 no, percent. she just left they just left same from difference there. in women's worlds <laughs> yeah. yeah they just left from their clinic just here a little bit ago right two days before you guys got here well the other night so this is one thing that i think really speaks volumes to you is you say hey i have these mules i'm not just going to put a video out there and you're going to see them at the sale i welcome you to my home Come see that where they live, spend some time with them, scratch their ears, ride them in the arena, ride them in the round pen, ride them through the obstacles. We'll take them in the hills. You know, you kind of have this open door buying policy. So when someone walks into one of these sales, they're not just seeing the mule in that environment in that moment. Yep. You're letting them have this opportunity to come spend some genuine time because these mules are not going for slouch money. I mean, you just no sailed a mule at sixteen thousand yeah. dollars because you know he's he's got more potential than what that sale was putting out there and and so you know some of these mules they're selling 30 you've had mules sell over fifty thousand dollars fifty two thousand yeah so i mean it's it's a it's a big financial investment but as somebody that owns mules a good mule is worth its weight in gold and i just lost a mule it's 28 years old and i would have done anything to keep that guy alive because they're so valuable. Once they get the job and you have that relationship, 
it is it is so important and it's impactful for your life and so uh you know being able to have people come out here and say you know what this is a nice mule but his personality just ain't jiving with me yep. you know you you're spending a lot of money and and not every mule is for every person yep i love it when somebody that came here gets the mule yeah and then what i i, I hate a lot of times because i'm i'm totally open and honest and i wanted to, to fit the mule into the right home mm -hmm. so when somebody comes up to me after the sale and is like hey i bought your mule and i don't recognize them or we haven't talked or anything like that i'm kind of like well well what's what's your what are you doing what with are you going to do yeah. with the mule you know see if it's going to fit and that and i have that conversation with them and and you know it's just i mean i don't know i guess that's the way a lot of people do it but i like people i like it when people do their research talk you know, call us, talk to us about the mule, let us know what they're, what they're going to want the mule for. And, and you know what else I like about your guys' program is you bring people after they buy the mule, yeah. you say, okay, come to my house and I will spend two days with you and I will teach you these buttons. I will teach you because every mule has like a little quirk or something. They're all a little different. Well, you can be, you'd be amazed at just how much saddle fit. Yeah. They might have a saddle that's not going to fit that mule and then they're blaming it on the mule and the mule doesn't deserve that and they don't deserve that mm -hmm. so it, when they come here i mean we go through all their tack and i usually have extra tack and if they're lacking some i can help them out he sold us shit this week i'm just <laughs> i'm gonna put it out there we came here and he's like oh that's your bit okay <laughs> hey have you tried this one let's put this one on and, it, and then you know next thing you know we're online we're on amazon man. Well, okay this i'm is not a, a problem, salesman okay but when i see something that's going to work for somebody and help them out but i'm going to let them know yeah for sure so and then you know every, every mule that particular bit might not work on this mule as well and yeah. you can get more out of it if you go through this bit mm -hmm. and i was just i just I don't know. I, I don't like to see people riding stuff in. Not that you guys had any harsh bits or no. anything like that. But I like to see them ridden in. I want them broke through the mind. Not just through the physical. Force. Force. Yep. Yeah. That's a great segue. I have a question I'd love to hear you answer. Because you've got so much experience with mules and horses. Because they are not the same. No, they are they not are the same. They are not the same. If and somebody were to ask, and are. I am, what is the difference between a horse and a mule? The biggest difference is self-preservation. Yeah. If so, um, let's just say a horse is more willing to do something because you're telling it to do it. A mule's going to ask you why a million times, and you're going to have to convince that mule that that's what what that it's in its best interest and it's not going to hurt it. That's why leadership is so important. That's why I have my three day clinic. Is when people come here, I t the biggest thing is is I'm there. I don't just trust them to go home and try to establish this leadership. A mule wants a leader. A horse wants a leader. So when you get at home, what you want to do is you want to, you want to kind of get that mule hooking onto you, knowing that you're its leader, and not through force or anything like that, but change its mind to know that you are the place that the comfortable place to be, and out there is not. And when you and when they accept you as that, then the training goes a lot easier, and the your mules just end up adapting to you so much better than i mean you just look at somebody that approaches a mule when they're saddling it and they're nervous and if you if you took let's just say you bought duke and you took him home and you didn't even you just you didn't do your you was one of those guys that just bought it and picked yeah. it up at the sale and took it home well anyway and you don't know for sure you're like i'm trusting this guy says it's broke i'm trusting it ain't gonna do anything and then you're you're Tip nervous around. the mule's gonna feed off of it mm, right. so we try to shut that down here i always said the best recipe for a for a not a disaster but something to not work out as a strain a new mule a new person in a new place and so when you that self-preservation that i'm talking about that right there they instantly don't root per capita don't want to trust you off the bat mm -hmm. they're going to question you as you a have person to earn that trust. when a horse will yeah. accept you as a person i always yeah. say that you know when with my horses i've been able i can tell them what to do with my mules we have a conversation <laughs> and they have input in these conversations but it's it goes moreover into the relationship with a mule and mm -hmm. the person that owns them is so important because 
if you break that trust, Maria, you can tell some stories about Joe and Lola. Oh, for sure. I mean, you break that trust or you have a mule that, I mean, your mule holds a grudge like I've never oh, seen. Oh, big time. But, you know, some of, them will forg- some of them are more forgiving than others. Some of them will test you more than others. Some of them have a different personality where you can put a experienced mule with an inexperienced person and the mule doesn't take advantage of that person's inexperience. But some mules are experienced and you put them with someone inexperienced and they walk all over them. They do. Especially. Run them under trees or whatever. So it's really important, the mule personality with the person and the relationship that they can garner together. Yep. And I, I referred to it a lot of times as dealing with kids, being yeah. a parent. And, you know, it's just like you are you want to develop that respect, but you also want that trust. And you got to be fair with them. Otherwise, they're going to rebel. Yeah. They're going to do whatever. But if you can just, you want to be that leader. And if you get a mule... It's like some mules are not really wanting to be all lovey-dovey. They're just more business-minded. They want to work. And they might not like work. That. Yeah. Yep. And I've had people not like a mule just because of that. They're like, I want a mule that likes me. I'm like, well, yeah. that's more of a business-minded mule. So anyway, there's there's that aspect of it. When we refer to little kids, it's just like you got to be fair with them, but you yeah. got to be firm with them. And you can't let them start walking on you because the little things – will end up to big things you know i mean it's like hey let's stay up a while, late and that's watch the TV. mistake horse people make they don't think the little things matter in a mule but in a mule they're like oh i got gotcha. you just like we talked about yeah. a rock or something or a bridge yep. the, or whatever yep. they're scared of and that little ember starts burning and it's just going to keep going if you don't shut it down until mm-hmm. it lights into a big fire and it's mm-hmm. the same thing long term they start getting away with little things and then it's like oh well i got away with that let's try this let's mm-hmm. get i got away with that let's try this and pretty quick they're back to where now they're running off because there's no leadership and there's no reprimand mm-hmm. and if you go overboard and you reprimand them too much you get them you'll hate you but you want one to like you respect mm-hmm. you be fair to it yeah yeah the discipline can't come from anger and yes they know. And, and and when i say be fair to it let the punishment fit the crime i right. mean don't don't lay some mule over the face or something like that because you know it just it right. stepped on your toe or something when well, it didn't mean to do it or but you know if one intentionally hurts me i'm going to let them know that i'm intentionally after it you know <laughs> so it's it's just kind of like it's that leadership mm-hmm. role it's like no you're not going to walk on me we're going to shut you down right now get this under control because if you get away with this then who knows what you're going to do later on down the line and what that's what scares me what is the hard part about selling mules to the public and a lot of times when you don't even know who you're selling to at a sale but i hate setting the price because because you know it, it gets so high sometimes right mm-hmm. and and so i can't really set that price and feel good about it and because i always feel that mule should hold up to that but i represent the mule for what it is mm-hmm. and those people look at that mule they ride the mule they check it out and they compare it to all the other mules and they're like i'm willing to pay this for that mule and it tells me how i'm doing as a trainer because mm-hmm. if people are falling off and not wanting my mules anymore it tells me that i'm falling off yeah so so that's kind of it that, and back to your question about the the biggest difference and i said self-preservation there's also phys- physical differences, you know, they're hardier, their muscle lays more like a wild game, it's thinner, it's not bulky like that, so a lot of them are better travelers, mm-hmm. smoother, and I'm not cutting down horses at all, and I mean, people say, oh, my gated horse will yeah, outsmoke right. on wall, right. and it might, that one might, but it's just like, in the hills, they just are more hardy, they can go more day sure after day it. after day, and their body holds up better on less water, lesser feed, like, not, like, not as good quality yeah. of feed that kind of stuff so they are hardier that way and it makes them a, that's what makes them so good for the back country mm-hmm. and i've always told people if you're going to work cows ride a horse if you're going to go to the back country ride a mule ride a mule if but get a good mule mm-hmm. and when them them prices get up there pretty high but when you think about it if if you was to go buy a mule and you trust somebody's word on it whatever and there's no video or nothing like that or they they're you just buy it that mule don't work out you end up selling it for half as much as you paid because it didn't work out and you got to tell everybody okay this is and then you buy another one and then that doesn't work out and you do that and so like i say when you buy your meal make sure you do your research check it out a lot and make sure that's the one because even at that them first two three mules that you bought that didn't work out who knows what you went through your confidence might have got shattered mm-hmm. your you might have got hurt and you don't want to ride anymore mm-hmm. i mean it's just there's a lot of things that can happen so buy the right mule and do your research talk to your trainers or your 
people that are selling them mm -hmm. and and seeing get the them one in their want. home environment i think is important because mules are so sensitive to new they are. So if you go where they've lived, who they've lived with, and you see how they are there and ride them there, then you get a better idea of what that mule's going to be like at your house down the road yeah. once he, once he's comfortable That's there. That's exactly right. You know, they're so different at the sale. You know, they, they are. They're just a Matter different fact, creature. And, I mean, you can talk to about everybody. I mean, if you sell very many mules, you'll, you'll get to the sale a little early. So you can just ride them and get them used to the place because they're looking at stuff. Mm -hmm. That self-preservation kicks in. They're looking at stuff. They're nervous. And, and I mean, they're just not going to be the same. Traveling's hard on them, on their, you know, their guts and stuff like that. So yep. they might have a little extra acid buildup, that kind of stuff. So it takes a few days to get them to where they actually ride like they should, and some might not. And mm -hmm. the some of the mules that I thought, man, this one's just going to be so good at the sale. And you're just like, what are you doing? Yeah. And then the ones that you're like, boy, us in here, I don't know. She seems like she's a little wound up, but she might turn out great. Yeah. Some of them have the most confidence. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing with a mule. Um, some of them are naturally confident. Some of them are naturally just followers, mm -hmm. and they have a hard time with confidence. And if you want, you know, that lead mule, you want one that naturally has confidence. Like Cora, she's not a naturally confident mule. No. And I am not... A rider to your level right so when we get together and she gets a little lack in confidence i'm not necessarily the best person to lead her help over, her get there lead yeah. her over things right like i i do better with a mule that has more natural confidence like my like my mule otis he nothing scares him he just goes um he has natural confidence so it's easy for me to ride that mule versus her mm -hmm. she's a lot more for me to ride because she needs somebody who is a very experienced, very confident rider to get her over. And that's where it really matters, you know, pairing people up with the right mule. Mm -hmm. And you've been you've been very confident, but that's one of the things we've worked on with with both of you is getting your confidence level to be the that leader yeah. to when when that mule does something wrong that there's you're going to be able to, you know, give it an exercise with confidence yeah. to to get past that obstacle. Well, and I'm here for a reason. I mean, I obviously want to learn from you, but I, you know, I got Cora. She'd never done a pack string. She'd been endurance raced. And, you know, naturally she is inclined to trot and run mm -hmm. because that's her training is trotting and running. Well, I'm leading a pack string. Um, <laughs> and I've done three trips with her now without any problems. In my last trip, um, we had some rattling and some sounds in that fear that she had was exacerbated with a lead rope going under the tail and she bolted on me a few times where she broke into a lope and kind of took off running three different times she never bucked she'd run about 50 yards and stop but it's something that she had done as a four-year-old mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and and so now you know here we are or five-year-old i should say four or five-year-old so in a new situation she's kind of fallen back on an old habit yep yeah. She'd gotten through it her last year endurance racing because everything was normalized for her. And so now I'm having to renormalize a whole different program for her at seven years old. So it really yeah. goes what you're talking about is what do you want the mule's job to be or what are you doing with it? Like she had never done a pack string and I'm throwing her into it and I just go right into the deep end of the pool. And I didn't desensitize to noises. And, you know, I rushed her into it a little bit. Mm -hmm. on my side thinking well she's she's going to be fine you know she's with other confident mules which matters other having other confident mules has helped her because when she kind of loses it they don't and then she's like oh okay everybody else is cool yeah. it's, you know it's fine but it makes me have to be a better writer but it also it's you know i'm here learning from you on how i can do some things at home to make her more confident so when those situations do occur i have more tools and she has been better set up with a foundation that that lets her know nothing's going to kill her right mm -hmm. and that that's what the training that's what everybody pays this money for training for is the foundation yeah so what we did with her is we we took her in and first there's the there's the mental piece of it and there's the physical piece of it we we took her in and worked on softening her yep. up, that kind of stuff getting her to really get off that bit and just slack reins and be able to shove her around with your feet wherever you want to show that she she respects that bit and she her wants training to was the opposite prior to exactly <laughs> very and, forward very heavy on the yeah. bit and we know? didn't and we didn't step up in bits or nothing like that no. to do it we actually we did it through legs teaching her and, yeah yep, pressure and teaching release. her with the legs more than anything and to stay soft well then the second part of it was the mental piece where we took you know tarps and bags full of cans well the tarps weren't like afraid that. she yeah, wasn't she scared of a tarp she wasn't scared of a rope under her tail 
but the sound from the pop cans. <laughs> oh, so Lord, we, she did not like that sound. <laughs> we had multiple conversations over this about exactly what was it that tripped that mule's trigger. Yeah. So, and we're just like, maybe it's that particular mule behind her that she don't like. And then it's like, no, because she was like this with the other one. She yeah. was good. And I was like, well, you know, what was we're it this? Was it the rope under the tail is. that set her off? And that just happened to happenstance ended up happening to to be the yeah. time that it happened and that kind of stuff and finally by the time through all these tests that we put it put her through we figured as it far out. as like taking another mule in there and pony it and you know having one run up on her butt that kind of stuff that didn't seem to phase her the tarp didn't seem to phase her when you took her rattling can <laughs> that, that was, was a bingo well and when i was riding out the other day with my saddlebag i had stuff loose and, and it was rattling and that set her off and then her like you said once their head goes up, their ears are back, they're looking for a reason to have a problem at that point. And I did not have the tools to bring her back down and calm her and relax mm. her. And, you know, I'm much more confident in that now. But where I really feel confident is taking her home and running her through these things repetitiously to where when they happen in the, on the trail, <clears throat> not that she bucked or did anything that I would consider mean, Mm -hmm. um, but that she'll have the confidence and I went through this at home 500 it, times. It doesn't system. have to be mean to be dangerous. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't. And, and, um, you know, it's, it's nice to have somebody objectively look at, okay, this is your situation. And we've, and I, you know, we had one trip where that happened and I was like, time out, mm -hmm. you know, we'd already planned coming here. It was very good timing for oh, me to have perfect. help. It was perfect. And, and on, honestly, when you mentioned the mule's age is seven years old then it's a perfect timing in that mule's life too yeah. because she's just coming in out of her teenage into her adult years and she start her brain's going to start working better mm -hmm. you know in the future so right now is a perfect transition to kind of like you know a kid graduates school and then he's got to go to work mm -hmm. it's kind of like a good time to get her lined out on what she's doing learn that she can control her mind and so i've always said you you're you you can take a little bit of spook out of a mule and a horse but you can't take the spook out of them but you can teach them mules how to and horses to re, how to react to it you mm -hmm. can teach them they don't need to run off they don't need mm -hmm. to buck and i like i've always said is when we talked about being dangerous the the difference between a ca catastrophic accident and get up and dust yourself off is so minute it is it's just what you landed on if your foot hung up in the stirrup mm -hmm. if your head hit a tree or i mean i've seen mules just and horses just blow up and guys get thrown under them it looks like they're getting tromped on and the horse runs off and they're like and i mean it's a major wreck and the guy gets up whoo you know man I, that, was, that was close you know yeah and then i've seen mules just go along and they just shy away from that like that and somebody's down and they can't get up they got a broken collarbone they got shoulders they got ribs they got punctured lungs yeah i don't want to come and it's off just like no. little things like that no. i mean it's just it's it's it minute. doesn't it it's doesn't minute. take a lot it to have a big it's problem. not the accident yeah. it's you know just like a car wreck like car gets out of control it just depends on if somebody's coming in the other lane or not mm -hmm. you know what it can turn into so so that's what i say that's tr it's important to shut down those little yeah. bad little behaviors so they don't become bigger behaviors and also it doesn't take a big a big blow up to mm -hmm. cause something well, well you know it's so helpful to have a, a diagnostician to say this yeah. this 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 and then oh by the way here's your homework list yeah <laughs> go home and do a b c d in that order yeah. and it's exactly it's just helpful well yeah. and that's like when i when i told you about the exercise yielding the hind end walking the square doing that kind of stuff yeah. for a good trail mule I mean, that's something that you can go home. And I don't feel that we went through over anything that we did here that you guys can't go no, home. No, we and could. Do it. And we, and that was a nice thing. You showed us on the first day. And then yesterday, Maria and I were out here. We geared up our mules, tacked everybody up, and we went in the arena and did it. Mm -hmm. And then said, hey, will you watch me do this? Will you give me input on how I'm doing that? And because there was a couple little things when you showed us the first day that I missed. <clears throat> a couple little details so it's really important that you actually do it yourself mm -hmm. right but also i live in the middle of nowhere and i'm out a long ways away from people and if i have a problem i that's a problem for me i need to be able to yeah. to work with my mules because i have three two-year-olds i need to work with them and be safe so and that's one of the things that i don't i won't say is different about me or nothing like that. well it's different about me but it doesn't make me better or worse or anything like that but i've developed ways 
to do it yourself. Yeah. I mean, there's a, a lot of trainers out there. They have a guy that helps them or whatever. I mean, Nellie will tell you, I work the mules. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what I do. And then I get them broke good and everything, or we buy them really nice and broke. And then we put, I put the training on them. Nellie to get them to rides, that next rides level. with me, you know, after that. When I, when I find out what they are, they're safe, get them safe, or they are safe already, then she'll start her riding and that kind of stuff. So I do all this mostly, well, pretty much when it comes to the training part, by myself. In a round pen, in the arena, and I've got my place kind of set up to where I can transition to those places as I need to. And I do it, like I say, I don't have another guy on a horse. Mm-hmm. I don't have another guy, you know, they're legging one up or something like that, I'm or you know tying a leg up or something like that i'm just doing it on my own and Mm -hmm. i'm given so i've got a few tools that i use to help me with that you know if i to kind of cut down on my energy level i have to spend when i do it Mm -hmm. and it's just and they're not like harsh tools or anything like that they're mental tools they're exercises that i can give the mule and kind of give that you let him be by himself for a little while and i always say get out of their way of learning let them figure out that the battle's within them it's not the physical and mental battle is because the physical the physical body's not it's trying to get out of it but the yeah. mind's got to comply to make to like oh maybe if we soften up it'll go away mm-hmm. that kind of stuff mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot of for the mules it's letting them course correct on their own so that whatever they're doing it's their idea Mm -hmm. because again it goes back to you have this conversation with them and they you you are a team with a mule you're not the boss you're you're the leader though yeah but but there's a difference there's a difference between a boss and a leader exactly a team has a leader that's right and but like i say you i just want to establish that you are the leader Mm-hmm. You let that mule start making Maria, decisions. Maria, your your mule Lola needs you to like. She needs you she's to be a, tough a leader. Girl. Yeah. yeah, she's she's a lot to handle. But once again, there's nothing mean about her. No, no she's no, a great no, mule. There's nothing mean about her, but she is a coiled spring. Yeah, she's, that never goes off though. But you always think it's going to at any minute. She did pretty good. She I was very really impressed with that mule. Mm-hmm. And she's Honestly, nice. I was very impressed with that mule. I was impressed with you. And that's when you came here and rode before when I was like. Man, I was hoping you or Nikki got them, got Duke, and Nikki got her. But anyway, I was like, these guys, they have the skills, they, they're capable. And that's one of the things when you buy a mule or you get into mules, be honest with yourself. And I can't express that enough. Be honest with yourself and the person you're buying from of your skill level. Yeah. Don't, I mean, let's just say that you think your skill level's here, just, just convince yourself it's not there. Yeah. It's down here a little bit more. And because everybody, like, just like me, I'm still learning. I'm mm-hmm. still trying to, you know, I get information from, and I'll take something from this guy that I think works, and I'll throw the rest of his stuff away, and then I'll take this stuff. And oh, it's important so to I'm talk to So I'm always watching and people. learning and that kind of stuff. Well, I thought it was invaluable. I'm, I'm super glad we came. I learned a lot. Yeah. I think my mules learned a lot. They did. Yeah. Your mules made a ton of progress. So did Absolutely. yours. Absolutely. Yeah, mine did too. Yeah. That. And, and I, like I say, I give you assignments when you get home to do, I give you the, the tools to do it with, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, you had a round pen, mm-hmm. you can do a lot of the exercise we did and you can, and then far as mentally your confidence and softening your mule up, you don't have, when your mule is not soft, you just, you're, you're, you can't make it do the things that you want it yeah. to do. Wait, and you're not in its mind. If that mule is is not soft, it's not. Its mind's not working like it's supposed to. You know, honestly, the biggest hurdle is you make it look so easy, and it's and it's it's not that easy as yeah. you make it look. But you only do it all day, every day. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's like you know, there's day I struggle. I struggle with I, some mules, and I'm like, man, you are a tough nut to crack. And <laughs> but. When you get it, sometimes those are the very best mules because that that's that confidence level in them. Just like, I don't need your leadership. You know, I don't need it. And then when they finally accept you as a leader and they start working for you, it's like having the guy that was kind of a rebel, but now he's working for you and he's just... And he's, he's perfectly he's okay. He's a go-getter. Like I was telling Christy, yesterday afternoon in the arena was the first time Lola has ever just walked and flopped her ears. Mm-hmm. And I've been riding her over a year. That's the very first time she's ever done it. Well, that's because we got her soft in the face. 
honestly, we... Yeah, I know that now. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that on Friday of last week. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's that's what was the whole thing. We kind of got her thinking, you know, this, like, it isn't a physical aspect anymore. They're using their brain. Right. And they're not just... That bit is not just mechanically making them go somewhere. Well, and that's what I like about the way you're riding with these mules mm -hmm. is... When you ask them to stop, like yesterday, you were loping Cora in the arena, and you just sat, and she stopped. You yeah. physically did not touch her mouth. You didn't spur her back. And, no. and same thing with a lot of these mules are doing it because they want to. Yeah. And, and yesterday, even doing the, the cans where my mule was spooking on them a little bit, and at some point, she was like, okay, I'm going to hold this together. I'm going to hold this together. Because they know yeah. if they hold out, you're going to give them that reward. Yeah. And, and, and they then they learn to control themselves. You're not forcing them with restraint. No. And we found out, and that's exactly right. They're controlling, their brain is controlling their body. You're not doing it with force. Yeah, you're not or doing any it mechanical by mechanical. You because know, there's nothing worse than being on the back of a mule. You're holding back all freaking yeah, that's day. Just, yeah, long. that's just a wreck that waiting is, to that happen. That is a horrible feeling. And that's yeah. why we went over what we did so yeah. much. And you guys told me when you came here what your problems were, and I was thinking, okay, what are we going to work on? And I kind of had a plan laid out, and that's what we did. But we got into the mule's mind, and we made them want to work. And it's funny is they're, they're – it. Well, you can get one that's wild, put it that way. It can be really wild, really scared of you. And when you get that thing latched onto you and it ends up accepting you for a leader, it's like that's the meal it wants to be with mm -hmm. you all the time. And it's, I always call it picking on them. I'm going to pick on her for a little while. And you do it, and it's like afterwards they respect you for yeah. it because they're like, man, this is, this. I'm, I don't know what they're thinking, but it's like a kid going, I'm doing all these things with a great coach, you know. I'm doing all these things. Because they and he's were proud of himself. Of so and it's things. like, hey, I want to go. And meals that were hard to catch are want to be caught through being worked. And well, the other thing, too, is, you know, we you say picking on them, but we're actually just looking for that hole in their training. And that's what we did is we, when we went in the round pen and we started, because you told me the problem when we're hunting, remember, we're looking, was it the rope under the tail? Was it the mule running up on its butt? Was it just what what was is the, What is the trigger for all of them? They all, if, if, you know, if your mule is having a problem with behavior, there is. What is the cause? What is the cause? Yeah. Right. And, and. You know, me just reefing on her face wasn't going to no. solve my issue. And everything you know? we did, it was either me doing it, you doing it, or her doing it. We never yeah. worked together yeah. and it took two people. We just no. did it. And then the other thing that made it go a lot faster was, remember, I told you mules learn off the release. Mm -hmm. And so we found that way, found a way to release the pressure when, when she had that, like when she's scared of the cans. We were releasing that pressure when she was good, would, was good with the cans, but we would apply the pressure when she was afraid was afraid and but not to the point where she like yeah, yeah. i mean the, that's the thing is, is you gotta balancing be act, right? you gotta watch that balance all the time and know where their limit are is because you're not going to treat every meal the same no and anybody that says they treat any every train every meal the same they might do that but their their release is going to be different for yeah. their different animals they have to adjust some for sure yeah. Yeah. and so like me walking out there like this and i've got a mule that's scared to death of me be me going like this and just facing them and turning a circle and they're running around that's scary to them that's all the pressure i needed to use and like brad cameron always says use as little pressure as you can as you can get away with but as much as you have to and mules you get what you're released for so find what you want the the goal that you want what you want that meal to do and when you get it release yeah and release slow and easy don't mm -hmm. be boom don't get yeah, a as soon meal. as they correct they need the reward Yep. Well, and that's the thing. Like my dad, you know, he's he's done pop cans and drug tarps. I mean, I've seen this stuff done since I was a little kid. But the way you do it, you you don't just have them drag stuff until they stop running. No. Uh, you actually work with them on timing and giving them that reward. And the, the training aspect happens a lot faster. And the fear factor for them is a lot reduced. Yeah. So you don't escalate it so high. But you also control that variable as much as you can, giving them the most reward as instantly as possible because that's where they learn um and and it's it's not like you know there's a lot of philosophies out there but there's all these different little tweaks to a philosophy to make it more effective and you've really got a lot of great tools and hold them accountable yeah for what they know you're not going to teach treat a mule on day one like you treat it on day 30 because they know better like yeah. i said i keep referring to kids it's like you're not going to get after a kid for doing something he doesn't know is wrong but 
after he knows it's wrong, you're going to hold him a little bit more accountable. And if he screws up more, a bunch of times, you're going to hold him more accountable. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, that's just the way it is anymore with laws and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, so you kind of get, that's why I say make the punishment fit the crime. Mm-hmm. And We came down and laid down the mule law. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's just like when I talked about this might be enough pressure on a mule right. that's really, really scared. But I might get one that won't get off of me. And I've got to run it down, whip, like it. just whip a flag and whip a flag and whip a flag to get it to even move, just to get it to get some movement out of it. Right. And right. so that, I mean, that's the difference of treating each one of them different. Your your mechanics can be the same, your thought process, your training program can be the same, but it's going to alter every different mule. You're going to you use different pressure, different it, release, yeah. and that kind of stuff. Well, I got in a little bit of trouble. Uh, <laughs> I don't say trouble, but I bought those two-year-old, the weanlings from Jeff and Christina mm-hmm. Tift, and Jeff put, it when they were coming to, Jeff put 10 rides on my mules, and, and they're like, look, Christy, these things are <laughs> way too in your pocket. Like, I yeah. mean, that's, so that's my problem is I get them to where they're too... I like them close to me, touching me. A great me. big yeah. pet. Yeah, they, I like them, great big pets where they're all over me. And, but some people, they want more of a respectful space. And there is a balancing act there of mm-hmm. them being disrespectful of your space where they become dangerous and respectful of your space but still friendly. Yeah. Right? And and you ju- everyone is different. You have to gauge it, judge it, train yeah. it different. To anybody listen, do yourself a favor. If you raise a baby mule, it's not cute that it jumps on you like a dog. No, do <laughs> or, not let them jump on you. Or nip you or something no. like that. It might be cute when it's a baby, but if you don't shut it down then you're going to have a huge huge problem. problem. So don't I mean may, teach them respect when you teach yeah. them that love and that kindness. They want to do the do both. In the heart of the wilderness, every step counts. No matter where or what you're hunting, Onyx Hunt Elite has you covered in the U.S. and Canada with offline capability, land ownership, 3D mapping, and you can even access specialty courses, hunt research tools, and elite-specific features. No matter where you pursue the wild, adventure is assured when you upgrade to Elite for the ultimate hunting experience. There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting, but we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. And thankfully, when we need it the most, We have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. And going into the the baby mule training and weanling training, I mean, I've had so much joy. And I got Lexi and Lynx. Lynx was three months old. Lexi was six months old. Otis, when I got him, he was born at my house. Hank, when I got him, he we got him as a weanling. My other mules, they I've all gotten no later than yearlings up until this last year because I've got this disparity of age where I just lost my... I, we lost a mule about five years ago to old age. I just lost one this week to old age and you know I want to raise these babies because the relationship you have but Mm -hmm. also if you've never raised a baby mule you might not want to be the person to do that (laughs) because it is I mean number one it's it's five years worth of work before they're workable yep um, but it's also five years worth of opportunity for you to set some really bad habits if you don't know what you're doing. Like you said, letting the baby mules jump on you or letting them nip you or, you know, these little things that are kind of cute turn into really nasty habits. And then pretty soon you have a giant pet that is dangerous. It's, it's just like when Annie, when she was born, she, on day 23 after she was born, her mother passed away. Mm-hmm. And I mean, she, we just 
Nellie comes out here and she's just laying there. We don't really know what happened. And I mean, she's, it, she wasn't old. She was in good shape and everything. And I don't know, heart attack, what. But anyway, we took that mule. And when we finally got it to take the full lack, it wouldn't take a bottle. So I just pushed its nose. It's like, it's going to die if I don't do something. I just pushed its nose down in the milk in a saucer pan. Mm -hmm. And we just fed that mule milk in a saucer pan all the time. But aside from that, we didn't baby that mule. We took we took another really safe Molly, which mm -hmm. was mouse that we sold years ago. We put her in with that mule, so that, that baby mule. So that mule learned how to be a mule yeah. and not that it just was this pet because I did not want that mule being one of those mules that has no respect and all that kind of stuff. And she, we picked a good one. We picked Mouse to stick her in with. And the Mouse, I'll just say Mouse raised her right. Well, and that's what I love about having older seasoned confident mules because these older confident mules lend themselves to confidence to young mules you made a statement this weekend it cracked me up you're like yeah well we don't want to get in a situation where we have contagious bucking <laughs> and that <laughs> is a thing where if you have one mule that gets triggered and it bucks and then the other ones are like ah! and yep. then they all lose it go to a clinic Sometimes that, contagious it bucking is not fun. I've been there in contagious bucking, but that's what's been so great. And I and I take it kind of for granted with my own herd, is these older ones are so confident. Now that I'm starting to lose them, it's terrifying to me because my young ones aren't. Yeah. They're not there yet. I didn't need Hank to die last week. I needed no. him another year, and I didn't get it. You know, and but that's you, just part of it. You know, if I was just to sit here all at once, we're all sitting here. I say, oh crap, and I just duck down and run. You guys are gonna be like. What's yeah. going on? So mules do the same thing. Don't yeah. think they don't. Horses do the same thing. Yeah. You get one bucking or run off, then it can affect them. All of them. So when I work my mules, I put them in. I work them in this round pen a lot, and I'm working with flags, tarps, cans, all that stuff. You saw how Cotton reacted when yeah. we had that. He didn't and care. Tied there. He just stood right there, and there's a mule in there just blown just running and running and running and it's got cans following it and all that kind of stuff and them other mules are standing around the outside so that helps with contagious bucking yeah. they see it all the time and they can't they just have to learn there and ignore it and then when something happens out there on the trail, on the trail. or at a at a sale or something like that and somebody's horse blows up or mules butt blows up prone. they're less prone to be like oh i need to react too it's mm -hmm. like oh they're just <laughs> Cotton just Doing stood that. there and thought, ooh, sucks to be you. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I had a horrible <laughs> wreck turn, buddy. two weeks ago with Cora, my little mule. It was just a freak deal. Like my little my little mule, my little horse was pulling on my pack saddle. She'd never been ponied. And I tied her to a big, you know, bomb-proof mule. And she rocked his saddle off a little weird weird accident. The, the Her lead rope got dallied around my horn. She kind of reared to get away from pressure, shoved her front leg through my riding stirrup because I was out of the saddle. And, I mean, I thought, oh, my gosh. And none <laughs> of them are tied up, and I have this giant amoeba of mules tied together, and my one horse's leg through the stirrup. And she flipped herself over sideways, and not one of my mules moved a muscle. You got they good meals. stood yeah. there. Cora stood there like a rock. Otis stood there like a stone. His saddle at this point is pulled completely sideways with his packs hanging off of them. And not one of them's tied up. Not one of them moved. Mm -hmm. And I got that little filly cut loose. But if they would have contagious bucked, I'm standing there thinking, oh, my gosh. It had just broke I, her leg. I'm going to have to shoot this horse yeah. because someone's going to lose it. But you, you did it when you tied it, when you put it with a bomb-proof horse. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's the thing the, is you they're have invaluable. To, having oh one gosh. around is invaluable. Yeah. Yeah. Having one that lends that confidence mm -hmm. is so important. Well, just like I was telling you earlier is you go to a sale and you can take two mules that hate each other, put them in a trailer, go to a sale and you get to that sale and there's all this commotion going on. One of those mules is going to get his confidence off the other one. Mm -hmm. And, and you might have never had herd boundness in your life with that mule and rode it hunting Everywhere. horns and you split up and all that stuff you ride away at that sale and that mule's like ah oh, you're i'm coming with you you're my buddy you now know? and so you got to work with that so a lot of times at the sale I'll, when we get there i'll just tell nilly and that's why you'll see just me riding them sometime because i'm like nope i'm going to take this one i'm going to ride it alone and then i'm going to come back i'm going to ride that one alone and that helps them not it helps them follow you as a leader and trust in you to get them through them all the obstacles yeah. what they view as obstacles people dogs other mules and chaos it they learn to trust in you and their ability and they and you 
build up their confidence. If you want a confident mule, how to be a confident rider. Mm -hmm. But if you're riding with the other two, you're riding two, they're feeding off each other. Mm -hmm. And then when they take one away, you've got to fix that problem then, and it's way harder to fix. Mm -hmm. So that's why I could say, oh, I'll go, I'll ride them out separately. Well, we so. even saw that in the arena yesterday afternoon. Yep. They even want to be together in the arena. Yep. And getting them to move away from that is sometimes a challenge. So when I, when I talked about, may you know, People say the right thing easy, the wrong thing difficult. I say make the right thing comfortable, wrong thing uncomfortable. Because I don't want it to, to think, people to think that they have to like really get after, like really, um, it just to put them in a, diff, a position of discomfort, make them do right. work or something like that. And then, so when they wanted to be by the other mules, what would I do? I'd go for and I'd work the mule by you guys. Right. And then when, I, when that mule, like I'd go to just, give it its head and ask it to walk away when it walks away i don't make it do a thing i'm just making it like oh when i get by those mules it's tough mm -hmm. i have to work when i'm over there he just let me ride around and you can do that with a gate you can do it with they're wanting to go to other mules you can do it any anywhere and it's a, like anything don't ever make where you want that mule to be the place where you work that mule mm -hmm. the most because Work it where it's uncomfortable, make the place that it wants to be uncomfortable. So it goes for a place, it goes for um, on the on the bit, it goes on the legs, everything. It's just make the right thing comfortable, the wrong thing uncomfortable. Like I talked to you about, like just shake the reins a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just on a slack rein, it's just like saying, no, 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 you're not hurting that kid. You're just saying, no, that's wrong. Yeah. And and so that's their, their little thing is like, you knew better than that. Well, and yeah. with Cora, when she starts listening to stuff and getting nervous, it's like, no, 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 listen to me. You don't need to focus on that stuff. Like, you kind of showed me ways to redirect her, and when she pops her head up and puts her ears back and she's looking for something, no, 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 we're not Put looking for anything. We don't, we're not looking for anything. Yep. You're right back here. You're with me. We're okay. Hug like em. our favorite Hug Red Hill song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Monsters on your back. Yeah. Right? No, but anyway, like, you, like I was talking about your legs, hug them through it, collect them up. And don't, when I mentioned that earlier about shake the reins a little bit, don't just think you can shake your reins. There's a process there's, that goes. It's not like you're like, yeah. There's a process you know, that goes up to that. Yeah. But that's yeah. kind of like the final thing that they understand that yeah. that means bad behavior. And, and you've got to build them up through it through our training and just mm -hmm. like hugging them through it and giving them a little bit of something to do while they're mm -hmm. looking at that rock and they're like, oh, maybe the rock ain't so scary anymore. He wants me to do something. Mm -hmm. And it engages their mind mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's a lot of it is just they get in their own head and then if they don't have confidence and then if you lack the confidence like you said it's just like this snowball thing for me like with cora this last week things happened so quickly i didn't even realize sometimes she was even nervous you know what i mean it's like and that's that's the thing when you're on them sometimes you can experience will lend itself to foreshadowing problems mm -hmm. but there are some times where problems aren't foreshadowable and that's where you need good training to have them have their own mental control See, which is what we're working on now is is i can't always predict what might set her off but i need her to be okay i can coach myself through this but that you you got a, a temporary solution in the minute in the yeah. moment right and then you have down the line that you're going to want to work to that mule being mm -hmm. better that's when you got to, like you're not just uh, looking at a rock i'm going to give it something to do on every rock i'm going to let it walk by that rock and i'm going to watch and see how that mule's thinking about that rock and it's looking at it and if it goes by i'm not going to reprimand nothing i'm going to be like good boy you did it mm -hmm. but then when he goes up and he kind of reacts a little bit i'm like hey you knew better than that and i'll collect him up drive him a little bit give him something to do and then ride him out and the next rock they start looking at and you, you know they're scared you know they're scared and you're just like i'm just going to let you think it through and that makes gives that mule confident in the future that he that, no, but if I, every I rock yeah, every rock it, you right. did this then it's just i mean it's it's a temporary fix in that moment but if you're letting them get by that rock and then let's say that right at the end they walk by and you're like you're doing it you're doing it and then they kind of just take a few steps and it's like hey you knew better than that mm -hmm. maybe collect them up a little bit and then do it and then when they then they're like well if i just can just hold it together he's gonna leave me alone what did i tell you about a good boss mm -hmm. he leaves you alone but he's going to give you a job to do, like let's say turn, and you don't do that job right, he's going to reprimand you a little bit. He's going to be like, hey, come on, he's going to, let's get after that. And and collect, like with a mule, you'd collect him up, give him a little job, then ask him again, get him to get off a bit, get him soft, then ask him to do that. When they take it, it's like, good job, leave him alone. Mm -hmm. The best reward there is just to be left alone, and that's 90% of riding anyway, because they're just going down the trail mm -hmm. if you're doing a trail mule. So 
But when you give them that little assignment, or else they just all at once veer off, of course, and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, that's scary. That's way more important than what we're doing. Then you got to shut that down and give them a little bit of like a job to do or something like that, and then work on the next time. So let's say that that good boss further down the line, he don't have to, that employee's not going to go off course. Mm -hmm. It again goes back to that relationship. And, you know, when you're on them, they feel you as much as you feel them. Yeah. When and you I, feel them anticipate, hopefully we, we have time to course correct. If not, again, it goes back to them being able to correct themselves. Yeah. And, and that's why I keep referring to people because peop, a lot of people don't understand peop, animals, but they understand people. Mm -hmm. So when I talk like that, I'm not just making up these big scenarios. I'm just saying, you know, this is how Make you can relate, relate yeah. to it. Yeah. Because people understand people better than they do animals. For sure. A lot of people do. For sure. And some don't. Like understand people at all <laughs> <laughs> like me <laughs> the man who has never left his yard <laughs> except but, for to go to a mule show and that's why <laughs> no and it and i think a lot of it you know you, you you're spending it and you're training the money and you're putting it into these mules and they're selling for big money because they have been conditioned to okay we're, when there's a bridge i'm going to walk over it i'm mm. not going to run across it i'm not going to freak out i'm not going to make you spend two hours trying to get me to cross it i'm not going to go off it sideways ways you know there's all these things that can happen that are terrifying on a st stupid thing like a bridge that you wouldn't think yeah. anything of if you don't know better or uh crossing creeks and water yeah. or uh a tent in the camp setting so you know you got tents and stuff laid out that they're not used to seeing at home and all of a sudden you want to walk them through camp and you don't realize why your mule blows sideways mm -hmm. when the tent flaps or mm -hmm. i mean it's just these there's little so things. Many things. It's so, there's dogs yeah. and there's game and there's yeah. See, antlers that are on my back all of it and that's and you know what you use your mule for yeah that's what i liked about this clinic instead of like one when i sell a mule because that mule i'm selling it for what it is i know what it is but you have been out there with your mule yeah. and you've found out what its problems yeah. are and where they're at for what for your particular yeah. use so we're not wasting a whole bunch of time on stuff you're not going to use and you you're like man i don't know why she's running away when she leads a pack mule you know mm -hmm. and so she we're trying the to first find three times yeah, or and four we're trying to find that yeah. hole when we finally find it we fix the problem and yeah. we're helping we're giving yeah. you the tools to fix it it isn't just like sending that mule to a trainer mm -hmm. like me and i fix the problem it's like you're involved when you go home and that bad behavior comes further up you have the tools to go well back not home only that but it. i have three two-year-olds at home and Work i have some other older mules that are new that i can take and i can apply these same yeah. foundational mm -hmm. training techniques to that are going to make them better you know by the time i'm riding my babies at three when they're three and four years old they're going to have done all the stuff i'm doing with her at seven yeah you know they're going to be so far along yeah um, yeah it really it's going to help them yeah. see and that's where the that's where the difference in the clinic here is is like nine times out of ten when somebody comes here after they bought a meal from me and they're doing the clinic that to get used to their meals and i'm showing them the so if you're training if you're like push like giving it the cues how you knew how to ride mm -hmm. your life and either i'm wrong or you're wrong it's they're just they're different. just different and anyway you're doing that and you're like this mule don't know nothing but you come here and i show you those cues and you get familiar with your mule the mule gets familiar with you you get the tools to go home and if because every mule are an animal they're going to revert back and try little things and you need to learn how to shut them down so so that's what that clinic does but most of the thing that it happens is people are like oh yeah she's great but i got this mule at home Mm -hmm. What do I do with her? How can you help me fix that mm -hmm. meal at home and give me the tools? And they'll use the three-day clinic to kind of learn stuff, and I'll bring in a new mule or something like that, and we'll work through things on that mule. So when they go home, they can teach that other mule some things. Mm -hmm. So it works out good that way. Because, but when it's when I'm your clinic, you brought problems to me. You brought your mules, and it was like it was kind of a mm -hmm. breath of fresh air to be like. Oh, well, let's figure, let's start looking for the holes and figure out what's mm -hmm. causing it. We know how to, and we'll figure out, we'll get we'll tools get it to fix or it. We'll work on it. And I'll give you the tools to work yeah. on it when you go home. And some mules just aren't good at the job people want them to do. I yeah. mean, that's just the bottom line. There are some jobs that people want of a mule or a horse, and that's just not their deal. They're yeah, just you, not if, apt to do that job. They don't want to do it. And the other thing is, if you want a good trail mule, buy one that's been on a bunch of trail miles yeah you know and and don't go to the sale and buy the fastest spinning horse there because no. you know when it does spook and it from that log it's got that much more speed and ability to 
put you on really your shoulder bolt. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Even though it might be a gentle mule, it's just got that. It's got that ability to do that. And it's got the athletic ability like I say, to get and, out from under so you. Be honest with yourself about what you want and be honest with yourself about your skill level. Mm-hmm. And ask the questions, talk to the people and, and you know, that, that kind of stuff if you're buying one. And if you've got a mule, seek out the knowledge. Don't just think that it's the mule's fault all the time. Just seek out the knowledge yeah. and find out if – there's tons of videos out there. I don't put any out. I might in the future, but it's like there's knowledge. There's there's training out there. There's advice out there. There's people. And you just got to have the confidence. It's mm-hmm. – like I say, it's it's – I showed you that it's not a physical thing. Mm-hmm. It's it's getting into the mule's mind and how to do it. Mm-hmm. So train yourself up. Learn how to learn more about how to fix things. And don't just go bigger is always better. Don't just throw a hard bit on them or something like that because you're just setting them up for worse problems. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, nothing is fixed. No. Mm-hmm. No. And, and that's a Band-Aid on it. And I, I mean, I've been riding mules a long time. We won't, I mean, I was two when I got my dad put me on my first mule. But there is always so much to learn. There and is. and every mule is so different. And I am limited in the scope of my experience in that I've had such a small closed herd because they live so long, mm-hmm. right? And the good ones we keep, they're life partners for us. So yeah. I'm not going through and di- diagnosing and troubleshooting and training, you know, 15, 20 mules a year, 100 mules a year, whatever the number is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've got my five. I've got my eight. I've got my ten. It's not... I mean, I don't have this giant scope of animals that I'm that I'm working through other challenges, and so my tool chest isn't as big as yours. Yeah, and neither is your workload. I yeah, mean, yeah that's true. Yeah, but so. I, I'm gonna tell you, I have nine. It's not a light <laughs> workload, okay? <laughs> yeah. Just, just the trimming alone is tough. I hire just, that. You know, there's the some things work. you just pay someone oh, to do. Oh heck yeah. You know, you can't afford it when you got that many. But no, you, the thing is, is like, say, how many colts do we have? We, I mean. And people are like, oh, you paid what for a mule? You realize we buy these as weanlings from yeah. anywhere from 3000 to $4,500. Yep. Yeah. And we, like a lot of these, that's, them are just starting to come to age right now. And by the time they get to that age and through all the training that they've had, and it isn't just a training, it's a culture it's and a lifestyle. It's their being, they, I'm dragging a sleigh by them every day. I'm riding, a, I'm pulling a sleigh on a four-wheeler, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm catching them tying them up moving them from pen to pen we're trimming them we're doing all that kind of stuff that's a lot so when clipping them by the time yeah. they get six seven giving years them showers old, and baths and that you think about it you, like i said told you earlier like on mouth 50 grand i earned up making about a dollar an hour yeah you know it's like <laughs> that's the way it really is yeah. but it's enjoyable yeah. for me so but that's why a lot of those and then like i say a lot of mules are here they're just waiting for their mind to come around get their brain right and their trust maybe their age that kind of stuff to where i think okay i read my meals all the time i'm like you're not ready to start yet you're ready to start and i'll bring those in and i'll then i'll if i don't feel that they're ready to take to a sale the next year then i'll go look for one and buy another one or i will just bring another one in and Mm -hmm. so i'm waiting for their mind to get right i'm not just going to take i always say if you want to be known as a good trainer only train the stuff that's worth training. Yeah. You know, and if you do train that other stuff, have an avenue like, like I do. Like if there's a cowboy out here that needs a mule or something like that or wants to try a mule and if one's got issues, I don't want to represent that mule as a sale mule because yeah. I only bring my best mules to sales. That's yeah. it. It's different than what the sale used to be. You'd take everything in a sale that you didn't want or like want nothing to do with and it was a problem to get rid of it because somebody's going to buy it and they set the price. I bring my very best meals because I want to be the best I can be. Yeah. And when that price comes in, I know how I'm doing. If I need to improve or if I need to, you know, what some of the things that I can do better, mm-hmm. you know. So we're all learning every day. And and like I say, I'm not above seeking out knowledge. I'm not about I'm not above giving out knowledge. Mm-hmm. I'm a lot, I'll help anybody, so that's what I I try to do. Yeah, it's been a great week. I I think Maria and I both are. Oh, absolutely. We learned a lot. I think the mules learned a lot. Yeah. Lola learned that she's not a Sean Peterson fan. Uh, <laughs> I don't think she's the spookiest mule I think I've been around. Give, me, just... give me a few days, though. Like two days. I mean, you could tell, though, once, we, once oh, yeah. I got worse. She decided, out. okay, you're, you're okay. She's just you're like, You're not going to oh, okay. kill me, I don't think. She's and suspect of people. Oh, she's just. She's, she's just not afraid trust. of things. She's, she's suspect of people. She likes me better than Joe. 
Oh, well, for sure. Uh, <laughs> actually, that's Poor not, Joe. Joe finally, after several months of scaring her, she, she, you know, he figured out, I need to do the work. I need to do the work. And, yeah. But it took a long time. And that's the thing that's different about mules, too, is they don't forget. Uh-uh. And some of them will hold a serious grudge. Yeah. So if they have a bad experience with you, and this is where, you know, if someone comes off a mule or has a bad experience with a mule or scares the mule... Um, you know, maybe you're getting on them and you spur them on accident in the flank or something and you have a wreck. That mule may never trust you again. No, and just like... And, and it's little things like that that they might be fine with you or me, but then they're right. like, oh, that dude over there, he got me good. Just and I don't like him anymore. For an example, Jason Berger, a good friend of mine, is like a brother to me down in New Mexico. He ha- he bought this mule and it's this big, beautiful mule. And and he would just freak out in the trailer. And he could not figure out why it was freaking out in the trailer. Couldn't figure out, well, then he goes back, calls people, calls people. And, I mean, he went on trying to fix it. And he's handy. He can fix yeah. stuff. Anyway, he ends up finding out that mule was in a wreck. Oh. In a oh. bad trailer accident. So, there, everybody, mind, don't forget. And then I also heard the saying, which I won't. I And, and it is kind of true. He's, you know, like a horse, they get in a wreck. They man, end up remembering that wreck. The mule will remember who put him in the trailer. Mm-hmm. You know, so they they will like if you're. I could, I could just about believe that. Yeah. I don't I don't say, you know, people say that don't ever, you know, get after a meal or anything because they'll resent you and they'll get back at you. There, that's why you have to be fair. And I'm yeah. not, and I don't really think that's true so much. I don't. Mm-hmm. I think there's meals out there that are just they're so kind and sweet, like like Lola. I mean, she might be a little bit resentful and like scared and timid but there's not a mean bone in the mule's body and and so like i say be be fair with your mules be hold that leadership you got to be swift fair and kind afterwards like Mm -hmm. you got to just go right back to see buddy was that so hard yeah it's not that big a deal and you know even with her as untrusting as she is it with somebody like you that she doesn't know at all just a couple of days of I am the leader, I am the boss, but I am firm and fair. She comes around relatively quickly in in that situation. Yeah. The respect sure. level that changed with her and Sean and the round pin in 15 minutes was oh, yeah. mind-blowing. Oh, yeah. Um, like, she stopped avoiding you, turning her butt to you, and, into like, okay, I'm going to follow you, face you. I need to be by you. I get it. Okay, this is good. And, uh, you and know, when and that, did I know it was time to quit? When she was following me. Yeah. Like, I walk over, cross the pen, she just stays right with me. And then when I, that's changing that mule's mind. And we didn't do anything physical no, to do it. No. We didn't have a rope on that mule. We no. never had nothing on that mule. No. And that's one thing I liked is, you know, you, you see people and they're fighting to put a head stall on that transition between the bridle or the halter and the head stall. Or, and they're fighting the mule to stay with them. And you, you work with them to where you take them out in the middle of that arena and yeah. you should be able to put their saddle on. You should be able to put their bridle on. And that mule doesn't leave you. No, I don't. Just I, I saddle them all the time out in the middle yeah. with nothing on them. Yeah. So, but but that's the thing is is you're you're not. I like to have a mule learn to how to deal with restraint. So that's like with if Scotch hobble or something yeah. like that. They they learn to deal with restraint. But you're not involved in the picture. They're just yeah. learning this stuff. Well, and they need to learn then, it not because you're a bad person. And you're restraining them, but practically yeah. speaking. You have them tied a little bit long, like Cora is behind us, so she could get her head down to eat. And all of a sudden, she gets a leg wrapped around the lead rope, and there's a big scare. And she's been restrained and knows, okay, if I just calm down and I relax here, everything's going to be okay. Yeah, but we never put a Scotch hobbler. In. No, we didn't, we didn't have to. No, we didn't. But but I'm just saying, people. I don't and want people to look at restraints as, oh my gosh, you're no, going to tie up mean. your mule. It's mean. But it's actually to almost in some situations to have them deal with things like hobbles and restraints so that when they get in a bad situation, That's what I was gonna they say. don't panic. Yeah, so that wait. part of training is, it may seem physical, but it's getting to the mind. Yeah. It learns, like if they get their leg caught on a, in a fence or on a log or something like in between logs or something yeah. like that, and they can't pull it out. I told you the story about mouse in the cattle guard. Yeah. And that, I mean, they learn that fighting does not pay off, so they're not going to hurt themselves worse. But you're doing it through the mind. Yep. And we're not involved in that. We're just letting it sort it out. So we got out of his way, out of their way of learning. Mm-hmm. So the other thing is, is the mental piece of it. So that's what I'm saying is there's places for physical, but there's also 
but you're using the physical to get to the mind. Yeah. But a lot of it, you're just in there in a round pan, and you're teaching it. Like, remember when I tried to bridle Lola, and she just yeah. took off the first time? Yeah. Yep. What did I do? Did I fight that? No. I, did I tie her up? I didn't do anything. No. I just worked with her and worked with her and got her hooking on to me until where she wanted to be with yep. me, and then I just bridled her. Put her bridle on. Yep. And then there's no fight. Yep. You're not getting a stud chain out, and you're not whooping on her, and you're not, no, you, you know what I mean? There was none of that. You can watch them and see. I can I can watch Lola and know when she changed her mind. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so she. Okay. Now, now's okay. And okay. what I did is I made the comfortable place, me being with me, the comfortable place. Right. And when she's not by me and she's trying to get away from me or she's trying to avoid me, that's uncomfortable. Right. And then when she comes to me and she's facing me, I'm, I'm the nicest guy in the world. I'm just mm -hmm. loving on her and all that stuff, whatever. And sometimes when they're really, really scared, the best release you can do is walk away. Mm -hmm. And so when they hook on to you like that and they turn and they look at you and you can tell they're still nervous, I just walk away and just lean on the round pen on the other side and let their curios curiosity get the best of them. Then they'll kind of start like, oh, well, he really isn't out to hurt me. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just, and then... If, but if you think you got to rub everyone down and just like love on and like, oh, 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 like if you lay a meal down and people think you just got to, oh, I got to make it think that's a place to be and love on it, love on it. And it's so they good. Don't and all like that. The, yeah. No, you do that with a wild meal that you laid down and then you get up. You, you best thing to do is walk away, leave it for a bit, let it get up on its own. And then it's like, well, I lay down and he just leaves me alone. Mm -hmm. So that's, but another meal might, might be like, Oh, you're such a good girl, you know, and not even, and they like being, Pet, being rubbed while they're yeah. down. So you got to read every animal. But they're very vulnerable when they're down. So for them, it takes a lot of mental, I think, strength to stay down and let you touch them, engage yeah. them, because that's their most vulnerable. And I also don't want people to be thinking that that's what we did with your meals. No. We didn't, we did not lay them down. We didn't do anything like that. We just worked on their mind mm -hmm. and the issues he was having. And most of the issues you was having, I think a lot of it is going to be solved through the softness we mm -hmm. developed. And because we did it in their mind and not just physically. Yeah. And then the other part is they're, them being able to realize they can control their own, their own mind. Yeah. And the flight is not an issue. The fight's not an issue. It's calm down and it goes yeah. away. It's, yeah. e it's more comfortable to stand here than it is to run, to run or take off. Mm-hmm. And, and if I'd have had a rope on her or something like that, or any one of them, if I had a rope and I was making them do that, then for one, I, it's hard to tell when they're getting it. And the other one is they're not really getting it because they're, you, you're using a physical. You're just forcing, forcing them. them. Yep. For, it needs to be their choice. Yep. Like when something scares her, she's got to have the choice of, okay, I'm not going to run away. I'm going to stand here. Yeah. You know, like, w w you know, what we were practicing with the rope under her tail, um, pull the rope up there. And when she would stop and just lift, lift her tail, we'd let it out. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so she's going to learn. If I get in a bad spot and this is real uncomfortable, if I stop We never and held relax, it there. She did. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So when, when we, we just put it there. And yep. then when she relaxed that tail, then it went away. That's right. But people don't realize that that's one of the smallest things in a packing situation that will cause the biggest amount of accidents is a lead rope under yep. the tail. I exactly. mean, it is a very big deal. Um, and, and it's something, you know. You definitely have to address that isn't her issue. Her issue wasn't that. I thought that was her issue. Mm -hmm. That wasn't her issue. Her issue is the rally. sounds coming up yep. from behind the her. And when stuff. she was racing, she would have issue with that. And, you know, is mm -hmm. this something coming up behind her is going to get her. She's but terrified of that. Remember I talked about meals reverting back? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying is that's why the leadership is so important. When you get a new meal home or whatever, you develop that leadership. Yeah. Be, and, and then you hold them accountable. So we should have four Apparently she ran away, whatever. Four or five or whatever. Anyway, was, now yeah. seven years later, or I mean, five. she's seven years at five, old. Five, it's six, she didn't. So, yeah. yeah. So now she's seven years old and she's like, oh, when that happened before, I got away from, I got away, I got out of that situation by running. Yeah. So what we did, we put her in the round pen and found out that, and yeah. let her learn that if I can just think through it, running is it's not, not the answer. answer. The question. Yeah, if yeah. you give them the freedom to make the correct choice, it makes them know how to make the correct choice i think later on and faster, it makes them want later to. on yeah. well and like you say you know you take a new mule a new person in a new situation and that's where you're gonna have the most problems she's mm -hmm. a new mule she's new to me and she was in a new situation now when i trail rode her with other people and i wasn't leading a pack string she'd done that with endurance racing that's mm -hmm. fine no big deal even the first couple trips it was fine but when the variable changed to there's now animals behind me and this and then there's the sound that's new yeah. 
it, it you never know what it's going to be, right? It's, no. it's you know. But like I say, you can't fix it out there. You have to, to fix, fix it, it here. here. And everybody just thinks having a mule involves no training. It's, no, uh, on your part. You yeah. buy a new, a trained mule it involves no training. No, you're training constantly. You're holding well, accountable. Well, and not only that, but just because up. it's trained to do X, Y, and Z doesn't mean it's going to do A, B, and C. Yeah. And, and if, if you want it to do A, B, and C, you better make sure. <laughs> even if you know. this mule knows this and you don't know how to, how yeah. it was trained to do that and it just quits doing it, then how are you going to fix it? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what I'm saying is, and if they start doing bad habits, that's, that's why I say get in there, be the leader, get the knowledge you need to, to be that leader mm -hmm. and the confidence. And, you know, I mean, be honest with yourself and, you know, even if it's like maybe mules aren't for me, Yeah. you know, well, I might even go to that level, but you know, it's like a real timid person probably shouldn't have well they're going to need a special mule that's right they're going to need a mule that is just like wants to do everything and they aren't has the di right disposition and the thing with mules is right or wrong they learn almost instantly yeah and so like when when i had the situation come last weekend and it happened three days in a row i'm like okay this is something i have to address immediately right mm -hmm. yeah i can't go another two trips and just keep riding it out because the chances are it's going to get worse if i don't figure out what it exactly. is you have to address it um you can't and then for me it's like okay well how do i address this without causing a secondary problem yeah. right and so it's it's all of this and and you know it it comes with, you know, being willing to be humble and say, okay, I'm going to go talk to someone who trains more mules than I do. I, I mean, I knew okay, she's going to need sacked out. She's going to need this. And you and I kind of at the, literally at the same time, we're like, okay, we figured out yeah. what it is. We're Matter like, of fact, I was, literally. I was gone when I figured it out. Yeah. And he was here when he figured it out. <laughs> yeah. You got back and I says, Hey, I, I says, I, I was thinking about this. And she says, you know what? I think it's the noise. And I was like, I was thinking about that too. I wanted thing. to ask yeah. you if that, if yeah. there was something on that yeah. mule behind you that might have been spooking yeah. because she doesn't care about the mule behind her. Uh -uh. The tail under, the, the rope, rope underneath the her tail got her a little bit, yeah, but, but not, not nothing like, like the reaction. Yeah. And, and something got her set off before yeah. that. Yeah. And that's what, and we kind of threw our it out. hunting for holes with tarps, with yeah. everything we ended up coming around and ropes and everything. We just come to the conclusion. It's like, when we tried the cans, it was like, yep, it's nice. That would be it. <laughs> and here's the thing, too. Some mules, they'll have a thing of their character that that is it's a flaw. Where none of them are perfect. People aren't perfect. But it's a flaw. Is it one that you can live with or is it a fatal flaw for your relationship? Mm -hmm. You know, my mule that just passed away, Hank, you couldn't lead off him. Yeah. And he did not want anybody behind him. And if you're riding him, you're in the back. If he's packing, he's in the back. And nobody's going to be behind that mule. We worked around it for 20-something years, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, he's the tail gunner, period. Um, <laughs> is that a fatal flaw for some people that want to run 12? It might be. Well, if you have a place you know? for that mule, that yeah. kind of mule, it's, yeah. it's great. That's it's right. just it like a herd-bound mule. Yeah. You might want a herd-bound mule because you got your little kid on it. And you don't want him taking off. You want him with you. So herd-bound is not always a bad thing. Yeah. Sometimes it can be a good thing. I like them if they're herd bound but yet somebody with an experience can ride them off with yeah. no issue but when they're in line or whatever they're with the other mills they just want to do what they want but i want them to have that ability that if you have a little bit of experience you can take you them. can get a lot out of that mule and it's not just that yeah. so if you're going to buy a mule figure out what you want to buy it for and buy the mule that's been doing that yeah you know or if you want to train one good luck you know i mean do it the way you want to do yeah. it because if, if you haven't trained a mule, you better seek out some knowledge. You have to help, get help. And yeah. even if you have, I mean, I've trained a bunch of mules, not like you, but the ones I've, I've raised, I've owned, my baby mules I've trained, but it's different when you're coming in. And I, like I said, I don't have this experience that mm -hmm. your professional experience, it's just not the same, you know? Well, and, and that's the thing is, I don't know, I, I do it every day, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> one of the biggest things I do every day is I'm reading them. I'm like, okay, where's your mind at today? Like, what are we going to work on today? And and people say that a horse and a mule, you ask me that, the, and they think you got to train a horse. The reason why I'm saying this is because if you've never trained a mule, seek some knowledge. The thing Absolutely. is, is, is basically, I, I will train a horse the same as I train a mule, but my release and my mannerism and how I treat that animal as with the things that I do with it are different. Mm -hmm. It might be the same 
exercises or it might be the same you know program kind of but the mule i'm going to treat it's each it's just like you can't treat two horses the same train them you can train them the same and do everything but your release is going to be different you're going to work on this more you know like with mules i really work on getting them soft and i think if you don't have softness you're way behind yeah you know yeah so so that's the thing is I, I don't want you to think like i'm saying you can't train mules if you train horses you can but it does help they're to know, different like, they're, they are different to know that they think a little bit differently mm -hmm. i think mentally their mental process is a little different i mm -hmm. also think they're more emotional oh yeah, yeah they are and yeah. on both levels right like if you get a mule that's really really scared it's really really scared right. and if you get one that's lovey it's like man get away from yeah them. right you, they right. won't leave you alone they're kind of like a dog that they way. literally yeah. are like a dog their personalities are to me <clears throat> that, yeah very it, when my horse friends ask me what are you doing i'm like you know it's kind of like having a horse crossed with a dog literally mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. then they get it you know then they kind of get it and then learn how to read those signs you know like like when i had bessie this year and i'm and i'm she's four years old and i sold her a salmon and i'm just like she people are like yeah but she's four and i says listen i ride mules all the time i know what's under me and i can feel it so i'm sensing these mules the whole time i've never even felt that mule getting nervous i mean oh, she's God, just no. she's just like oh okay she might not be the you know she's four she's kind of gangly she isn't in she's kind of in her teenage years whatever anyway but when it come time to being nervous and being and having a four-year-old i'd represent that mule as a four-year-old way before i'd represent 80% of the other mules right mm -hmm. at 10 mm -hmm. you know so that's that's the thing is is you every mule when I train it it's going to treat it a little bit different like I say this might be enough to set that mule off to where I get movement and it might be a flag on another one right you know and so that's why I say it's not just horses and mules it's it's every individual animal but there is a, a don't let anybody tell you any different there is a fine line not really that fine on mules and horses when it comes to self-preservation mm -hmm. oh yeah and per capita don't i mean there's exceptions to the rule on everything but per capita they're either really really like you or they really really don't or they're more business-minded that would be the middle you know if they don't like you you may as well just throw in the towel and i've seen that i've seen that where i mean if your mule does not like you it's not worth it. I had a mule as a kid. I could ride her anywhere. She'd buck my dad off. She'd buck my sister off. She didn't like them. She liked me. I could do anything with her. See, and that's the big difference when I talk about mules and, and horses and difference. There's more of that in a mule. Yeah. And so I can have a mule do everything I will ask it to do, and I can ride it great. I mean, I've sold them that I'm like, man, she gives me no trouble. Or yeah. She gives me no trouble at all. And somebody else buys them, and, the and then they they don't have that leadership or whatever and somehow that mule is just like nope and then i've seen personality conflicts mm -hmm. with mules to where the, they just a guy's a little too more too bold or something yeah like i don't know yeah but the release can be even a even a look you know like if your wife's glaring you down and then you just know you're in trouble yeah you know so that's what i say that release might be me looking at that mule and looking at its flanks like you get them flanks away from me you get that butt away from me yeah. and i'm just looking at it like a predator she turns her butt away from me and then i look away like this it's just like if your wife's glaring you down and then all at once she's just like oh gives you a smile like oh you know it's yeah, like body language is everything yeah, mm -hmm. it is and that's the only way you have to communicate with them mm -hmm. really is your body language whether it be you know and then there's the just the physical aspect of getting to their mind through their body it's like when your wife says i'm fine that means you're <laughs> uh, everything is fine no, no it's no, not it's no not it's not <laughs> good good yeah comparison. Are you okay? i'm fine i'm fine yep yeah. yeah. so it's tone of voice too and that's another thing i've told nelly i says there's a couple things that a mule and a horse or an animal can understand whether it's a dog a horse whatever it's tone of voice oh yeah and and that look and and that's that's two things that they will really understand and your release might just be that look mm -hmm. and you're i'm looking and then that mule that mule turns turns and faces me and i'm just like good girl you know mm -hmm. then i'll walk up and she turns her butt to me again i'm like what is that you know and i'll look at her flanks like i'm gonna get them and then she turns her butt to me and then i walk up i turn away instantly mm -hmm. i just when that mule's butt goes like this my body's going like this mm -hmm. and that's how we got lola to like me 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Lola doesn't like a lot of people, though. She's just yeah. Her she Christmas is a business-minded mule. Really, really short. So yeah. here's the deal with Lola. She didn't like me. She liked me, and then at the end, she like after she'd been turned back over to you for a little bit, and I got back on her, and I'm like, here, you got to be. She was like, no, 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 no. Get out. You got to work her a little bit more. She's like, maybe I don't like this guy. And then she went back to like, oh, I guess I do like this guy. Yeah. 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 Well, they get. And you could watch it. You could watch that progression. It was interesting. Yep. And like I told you, head up, elevated head and ears back, that's way different than head down, ears back. Yeah. Because then they're just paying attention to you or they're just tired and relaxing. But when they're like this and they're tense and it's like this, that's why I say when we got them ears flopping on yep. Lola, yeah. Yeah. it's because we got her collecting up good and it relaxed those muscles in her neck and that, that nerve, whatever, and it just let those ears go like this. Yep. yep. And before she, she was a little, relaxed. she was bracing. Petting her is like petting a brick wall. Yeah. She very, is a very stout similar. lady. Yeah. yeah. She's a stout lady. But she kind of quit her bracing up. Oh, for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I've never seen her do that before, mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of progress made this week. If people are wanting to connect with you, either they're interested in acquiring a mule or they want some advice, how do they reach you? So I would say, first off, go to our YouTube channel, Peterson Mule Company. And, like I say, it's Peterson, P-E-T-E-R-S-E-N mule company and then it has a lot of our old videos find out if that's something you're interested in one of the things that we do that i think sets us apart is you know there's I, i'll say right out there's better outfitters that are in the hills every day there's better rainers out there there's better people they pull carts there's this person might be better at liberty training whatever but what we do is we try to take everything because i never who's going to buy that mule and i want to make sure they see cows they see the trail they've crossed water they're worked in the arena i can show them how good they work in the arena there's you know they're they're well-rounded they, they're well-rounded they've been ridden through town you know the, that kind of stuff they've been exposed to dogs so we try to take everything and put it four wheelers that kind of stuff and do it but the biggest thing that i want common in all my mules is i want them soft and i want them supple and i want to be able to just Hold slack in those reins and be able to push them wherever I want with my legs. Just touch them and they get that cue and they move over. And I'm not really shoving. I'm reinforcing if I have to. But they just feel that softness like you like with cotton. Yeah. You just pick it up and then I can control every step with his, my butt. And if I just touch my leg on his side and like we're going that way, he's just going to not even tighten up. Mm-hmm. So that's what the goal I'm shooting for with all my mules is I don't care what direction they're going. They better be soft. Mm-hmm. And they have to be to do what I do. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is I want them safe. They better be yeah. safe. I won't, I, if I feel there's a mule that is unsafe, for one, I won't put Nelly on it and I won't take it to a sale. Mm-hmm. I'm going to find that cowboy that wants to, you know, pay lesser money and have a project. Yeah. Yeah. And so you guys on Facebook? Yeah, we, we are Peterson Mule Company. And the best way to get a hold of us, <laughs> she's going to kill me for this, but get a hold of Nelly. Because I am, <laughs> I mean, really, you've seen how much yeah. I pay attention to my phone. Yeah. It's in the truck or whatever. Well, and we've then, looked for your phone a, a few times just this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And Where'd then when I get go? home, I'm kind of like, oh, I just want to relax, you know. Because yeah. I'm out here till dark. Yeah. And but they can't, they can find you on Facebook. They can find you on you have your YouTube channel. And so yep. do you have a website? We had a website, and it was Peterson Mule Company, www.Peterson Mule Company. I don't know if it even exists anymore, okay. and I haven't been on it. We're really So what we're trying to say is Sean rides mules. He is not a techie. Okay, so, but, uh, but uh, so, yeah, Facebook is probably the best way to reach Nellie's, which would be, what is, do you even know your Facebook handle? Do you know what it is, Maria? He probably didn't know. It's Peterson Mule Company. Pe- and then on I'm Facebook? Just, yeah, on okay. Facebook. Okay. Yeah. But what'll trip you up? And then we each have our individual in. Facebook yeah. too. Yeah. And and Messenger, I don't have a like it doesn't give me a notification once on Messenger, and I'll look at Messenger one day and I'll be like, holy crap, I've got twenty. Don't get offended if he takes a little while to answer <laughs> you. <laughs> ask, Again, ask these guys. Yeah, go on Nelly's on Nelly Nelly Peterson, and it'll be on there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's N E L L I E. Yeah. Yes. And I and I am looking at maybe. You know, selling a few more mules outright, but I'm not doing it right now. But I might, you know, I, I'm still always going to go to these sales because it tells me how I'm doing as a trainer. And for me, it it also opens you up to a wide audience. Yeah. And then, like I say, but if I'm going to sell them here at the house and, you know, I've, I'm going to always keep my best mules for yeah. the sale. Yeah. It's just the way it's going to be. So if you want, like, what you see in those videos... You're going to 
You're going to go to you're a sale. Go to a sale, but uh, but I'll have a nice trail meal here once mm -hmm. in a while and yeah. stuff like that that I'll that I'll let go and you know maybe it's something that it's too old to be a sale. Well, meal cotton is a good example of that. You know, cotton's a great meal. He's cotton's awesome. an awesome meal. But, He's an awesome meal. And you know, like I say, you buy these colts when they're young and you pay a lot of money and then you get there and you're like, I didn't make anything. And it isn't just that. It's like. I love that mule. He's yeah. so oh, fun he's, to ride. He's, yeah. he's a really nice mule. And I was yeah, you were my out here. about him, and he said, you only have a two-horse trailer. Don't bring him out. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's going to ride No, and there's seat. a team penning here, you yeah. know, I mean, and I'm going to do that team penning because one of the things is, is you probably should have a good mule around. If you want to be known as a good trainer and you go to anything like that team penning thing, mm -hmm. I don't want to show up on something and just try to teach it how to team pen. Cotton is like, he's... He's ready to go to work. He's, Yeah. He's fun. Yeah. So you guys are looking for a mule. We've got Chrome in the Canyon that they'll have mules at this in 2025. Uh, Jake Clark's mule sale and salmon, the salmon, salmon show yeah. in Idaho. So those are the three shows that you guys are pretty much campaigning and getting ready for mules for. And then the great thing, if you go to those websites, they'll have uh, mule catalogs, sale catalogs. And so you'll be able to read the biography of these mules that'll be in the sales. Um, and then their contact information if you're interested in one of them is in there and again like we talked about earlier they have an open door fa you know family type policy come here come to their ranch ride the mules get to know the mules mm -hmm. if you love the mule then you go to the sale even right, and then afterwards right. they help you through that next step of ownership so um and and honestly like a lot of people that come here afterwards they end up being leaving best of friends yeah like like you guys i mean look at maria i mean he can't get rid of me. She didn't even buy a mule from him, and he's stuck with us. I don't know how well, he got the short end of this stick, but he's like, all. if you buy a mule, I'll come work with you for a couple of days. We didn't buy anything, and here we are. Some of our very best friends, though, have come from people that we've sold mules to, and they come here, and we have a lot of fun. And I kind of leave the clinic up to them, like, what do you want to learn? Yeah. For one, I'm going to introduce you. We're going to go through saddle fit. We're going to go through the cues and that kind of stuff and get you familiar with your mules and some people are just like no i just want to go some on some trail rides yeah and we just do some trail rides yeah. or some people it's not mandatory you don't have to take it but i do recommend taking it because just like i told you earlier the best recipe is new person new place new mule and here i familiarize you with your mule your mule with that we get your tack right we make sure your saddle's fitting and i'll help get you, you anyway i can there. you know it's a full instruction manual for this very complex animal you just bought mm -hmm. yeah. you know and it really helps a lot and you know those sales that that you know all of sean and nelly's top tier mules are going to are also online yeah so yeah. it's super valuable to come here spend a day or two ride all of those suckers. and if you can't be present at the sale you, you can still bid online that's right that's right you, i'm glad you pointed that out you've spent some time with them in their home environment you know exactly what they're going to be like and and i think it really can solidify a lot of your choices mm -hmm. before you even get to the sale which makes yeah. makes a huge difference like i say i i work so hard on these mules and put the miles in on the time in not so much to get the money at the sale but to make sure it's going to work afterwards yeah. right and i like it when people come here and they ride them before or whatever and and that gives you confidence if you can't be at the sale you're like man at least you I already know, what that know. Mule is. you know like i wrote three very different mules you had that all sold at yep. sales uh, you know they were all very very different yep you know? they are and that's what i say buy the right mule for you if you're going to want a trail mule look, make sure you buy one that has trails on yeah it. if you're going to work cows make sure one that works cows if you want a rope mule get one that ropes you know and, and that kind of stuff if you want a reining mule but like i say i try to expose them to everything yep. i can so they have a little bit of all of them and they're really i mean i make sure they're soft and so so when you come here it's just i'll get you set up like that but it's just like okay now what do you want to work on mm -hmm. you know what do you want to do and then some people are like man i want to get this technical stuff down and some are like screw that i'm just gonna trail ride let's go try it yeah trail. And so we have a lot of fun with that. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate your time this weekend and for, you know, sitting down this morning before we get on the road. And it's probably Thanks. time for us Paul to get out, out of here. here. I know. <laughs> He's like, leave, ladies. In between stuff. He's like, hey, can I go Harold my arena? Because I can't get anything done with you hens around here. No, I guess yeah. there was opportunity. I mean, it was like, for one, we had to have an arena. And I just got the sand and it was not, I didn't feel it was safe. So I had to work that every chance it I got. It was good. It was so great. So I felt like we was in it. And then when it rained, I'm like, you care if I Game go here again? 
Yeah, I gotta get it Because it's gonna help it. So. Yeah. No, everything was great. We had a great weekend. We learned a ton, and I'm, you know, excited to go home and fly a lot of these things to not only Miss Cora back here, but also my two year olds and and just yeah. You know, I think Marie and I both have our homework, and you're gonna hear from us. So there you go. You're so do you guys feel like you got the tools you got? You, I mean, we. For yeah. one, the first day, I wanted to show you that your mule will do it. Yeah. And then the other one, I, the second day, I want to show you that we you, can, do you can do it. You can do it. So those when you go home, very, I want you guys to take those exercises and everything we did and apply them. And I know that not everybody can just ride mules every day, but I know that you're going to spend as much time with your mule as, as I you can. can and you are too. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. No. No, I'm, well, I'm with mine every day that I'm home, whether I work with them as another thing. But a lot of this stuff that you taught us is while I'm doing other stuff at home, I can be training my mule and they're doing it for themselves. Yep. Like, so it's, it allows me to be able to work with them, but them actually work with themselves too. And so yep. that's, that's time saving. And that's important to me as a busy person, you know, to you have know, it also helps to have a specific list because, yeah. it, you know, before if I was thinking, well, I don't have two hours. No, yeah. you don't always need two hours. No, no, you don't. Honestly, a meal will learn the most if you spend 30 minutes with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Just spend some time. Don't let overload them get their it, mind. Yeah, let them get it right. Mm -hmm. I, I find that I initially would begin to make that mistake. You know, horses, you can drive and drive and drive and drive and drive and they're mm -hmm. just like they answer they just keep doing it and keep doing it. and my mules begin to go jeez they start right. shutting down yeah like yeah okay, they, you want to finish on a good note make sure it's it's solidified finish on a good note and if they're doing it perfect just walk away and make it a partnership yeah. where you're the leader and I'll always be the leader and don't get discouraged but be that leader and if something isn't working out seek out the knowledge you can get to mm -hmm. make it make you know that you have the tools to do it because if you don't know what you're doing it's like i can't go pop the hood on my truck and pull a motor i mean i can't do that stuff yeah and it's just like people are the same way as mules you need to seek out a little bit of knowledge and you youtube just doesn't always cut it you know? no no i have to be able to see it and feel it and touch it and well and uh -huh. every every motor's like every yeah. every like 2016 ram motor six seven's the same but not every mule's the right. same. You can't do step by step by step. We might, just like I told you about the square we was working on, mm -hmm. if it's failing here, work on that. If it's failing here, work on that. So it isn't just, it isn't, it isn't one, two, three, four, I do this. Mm -hmm. It's, I might work on one. I might work on two. I might work just on three. Just make a list of what's Well, the happen. mule will tell you where they need work too. Yeah. But quitting on a good note is a good. It's important. Is Somebody told important. me one time, it's Make like it asking your parents for permission of something. You always stop at a yes. Yeah. yeah. For a mule, it's like if you ask it a question and they give you the correct answer. Yeah. You don't have to repeat the question twenty times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you because you about yeah. Answer. Well, at about fifteen, they're gonna be like, "Are you not paying attention? Shit, I have already done." <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Stop well, thanks, yes. you guys. We're going to get on the road. Thank all of you for tuning into this episode of the Wild Uncut Podcast. Thank you again to our sponsors that allow us to be here. We've got Ruger. We have got Safari Club International. We've got Onyx Hunt. Three great partners that make sure that you guys have the opportunity to listen to this podcast. And thank you all for joining. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, like, and share it with your friends. If you know somebody that might be interested in learning a little bit about more, uh, more about mules. So thank you all again for tuning in. And thank Thank you guys for coming out. It was fun. Yeah, it's a lot awesome. of fun. When conditions get tough on a mountain hunt, your gear must be tougher. Making every opportunity count means selecting equipment that will not fail. Any condition, anywhere, Hornady Outfitter ammunition is designed to perform. Available in a wide range of cartridges from 243 to 375 Ruger. When you're looking for a hard-hitting, deep penetrating bullet and cartridge that performs in the most rugged environments, look no further than Hornady Outfitter Ammunition. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.